we have now reached the point in time where the way Sonic has been structured will forever change. I finally found him. The Iblis Trigger. I think the one aspect though that seems sick, just by looking on how it's meant to be shown is how it has like three different main focus Jeff Sonic and then Shadow and then of course the new one Silver. I think that really just surprises me is how slow he moves. Look at, when you look at Sonic's speed he, he's moving he, he actually builds up speed while with Shadow it barely feels as though like he's gaining any speed at all like he's barely accelerating at all which is insane when you look at how his movement is compared to like all the previous games there's just no movement at all I'll say though i do love his multi-attack homing attack where he homing attacks in and then does a three or four hit combo onto the enemy i do love how that is executed because we would honestly we would actually see that later on with how frontiers interprets that with how combat oriented frontiers became which i am glad they went with for, for the series Shadow does also have like a weird ability now or, or it's a weird meter system because like i barely even felt like i needed to use it in the game to like progress because they have like the uh because of course you remember there's like a meter system in this game so you're able to build up meter so that way you're able to use chaos energy because i'd say the only time you, it was necessary is when you needed it to get to the second level in the game and then i'd say you still have it for when you're fighting methods but i really didn't feel the need to try and use the level two and three even though they have like stronger abilities i didn't really feel the need to use them as much because i feel you could still beat the game without them it just didn't feel like something you would definitely improve uh, shadow overall based on gameplay remember how we had guns and vehicles in shadow the hedgehog for some reason i guess the devs were like all right you know what we need a good way to just bring these both actually you know what we're just gonna merge the both and boom we now uh, have created vehicle weapons we're gonna go full mad max with this gameplay let's see how this goes you story on the other hand i definitely think this had the best characterization for shadow story wise it really isn't much of a story detail but it just shows like some sort of progression with shadow when you uh start shadow's mission you find out that shadow's on a mission for gun I never explained why because like it's just a small story detail but i feel the, as though it, it's both the way for Shadow and I guess the Gun Commander, if he was present in the story, for both of them to just move forward and just put the past behind them, just as Shadow said it multiple times in the story. But I think they definitely just wanted to have that part of them just put aside so that way they can just both work together in the future to just make a better future for everyone. That's that's how I would want it to just see it be presented. That's I think the angle they were trying to go for with this. Anywho. Shadow's whole story in this game revolves around Mephilus the Dark, who is essentially the main threat throughout the story of 06 as he's still trying to join with Iblis once again to become the Sun God Solaris. Mephilus of course tries to get Shadow to join him and of course Shadow rejects him not wanting to do so. He keeps doing this and continues to do it again when he sends Shadow to the future and reveals his fate for what is to come in the future. This dark future where Iblis destroyed the world, the world blamed only one person for its destruction. Shadow was blamed as he was way too powerful. The world saw him as a threat. Even though Mephilus tries to offer Shadow a chance to alter his future by joining with him, he still believes he, he can change his destiny his own way. Previous game, we had Shadow fighting against his past and uncovering his memories. And now with this game, he is now trying to fight his future. I'm just gonna skip ahead to the part of the story just because I'll talk about what happens with Mephilus in that fight later. When we finally get the three hedgehogs all interacting together, we get the best roundhouse kick ever made. 
But also, I guess we get some uh, portal that takes them to the origins of Solaris or something like that. The Solaris incident, we see how both Mephilus and Iblis were created as both were split entities that came apart from Solaris. Which explains why Mephilus looks like Shadow as he tried to re he remembers his face and chose to take upon that look. Upon returning to the present, the Shadow was immediately able to recreate the scepter. After creating it, Team Dark reunites over at Wave Ocean where Omega was fighting off Mephilus. <laughs> Which is also where we find out Omega was the one who sealed Shadow, which was why he's, we saw him deprogrammed in the future a while back. It's also where we, Omega and Rouge both learn of what is to happen in Shadow's future. Despite how the world may see him, they, they promise to stay by his side. Interestingly enough, Team Dark stayed a lot more connected in this story compared to how Team Sonic did as with Sonic, he went off on his own for like a lot of the other missions and didn't really rely on Tails or Knuckles to help him as much in a few of the stages. Because he took off like multiple times in the story. You barely got to even play as Knuckles for the most part. The story route definitely allows both of them to interact more with Shadow's story as when Rouge got her stage, it was the only one where it actually felt like something happened while with Tails and Blaze's stages, nothing really changed. While with Rouge, she was able to find Omega and then get him to go to where Shadow was in the future. And you cannot, and you cannot tell me Omega knows how to use Chaos Control. I will not, you cannot tell me otherwise. This man knows Chaos Control. When they track him down, they do see that Mephilus has already obtained a Chaos Emerald to join with Iblis. In terms of how the other final bosses went for the other story routes, I love how this one feel has a bit more of uniqueness to it, as you do get to see a lot more of somewhat of Mephilus's dark powers, while with the other ones you were doing, Sonic, you just had a repeat of the adventure boss, and then with Silver's Iblis, you just get to see him use domain expansion. Afterwards, we then see him be sealed in. Nope. Destroyed. While Sonic was able to save Elise from Eggman, Silver was able to change the future and get rid of Iblis. Shadow's route was the only one where he was not successful in taking care of Mephilus. And despite all that, we get one of Shadow's best moments, and probably the best moment in, in this entire game. If the world chooses to become my enemy, I will fight like I always have. Even when everything is looking brim, he still continues to fight no matter what. And of course, when you beat this game th with through all three endings, you then get the final story where Sonic dies. Oh, really? Oh, wait, hold on a second. Later. All right, I'm back. What did I miss? Before they understand a way to bring him back, I do love this bit of dialogue that Shadow has in contrast to what Silver says and trying to take down Solaris. Certainly. It might have been possible if he was still alive shows how much faith and respect that Shadow has for Sonic as when he knows he's able to overcome any obstacle and always push through no matter what. But now with Sonic gone, it is much harder to overcome Solaris. And then we get to- I'm not a journalist, you, you know what happens. I, I don't have to explain that cutscene. Of course, get, get the transformation of all three hedgehogs going super. Which will also be the last time we ever see Super, Super Shadow for a while. If you haven't been able to figure this out, but but trust me, it took me a while to understand this. All three hedgehogs do represent a point in time. Silver representing the future, Shadow representing the past, and then Sonic, of course, representing the present. I'll 
release you from the chains of your past. I will protect the future, the present day, the here and now that you've stolen, time to take it back. The this game would be the last time we would see a story path with Shadow, as he, the only other time he would would be for the Rivals games, and then his uh, stories would be put on hold, as with how Sonic 06 damaged the, so the series as a whole, he would be put in the background as Sonic was given more focused outside of everyone else. And despite what has happened with this game, I still find myself going back to revisiting this story as a whole, just for, just mainly for Shadows. Shadows the one where it's more of a slight, complete story in a way. You have each of its allies all engaged in the story. You have a great pro antagonist, and you have a Shadow have no flaws whatsoever with his characterization. Even though he is slow, as I said before, it's definitely not the worst he's played. That's not until later on with... <laughs> 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 <laughs>